Chapter 14 Grid Navigation Introduction The original purpose of grid navigation was to ease the difficulties facing the navigator during high-latitude flights. But grid can be used at all latitudes, particularly on long routes because grid uses a great circle course for a heading reference. Grid is simply a reorientation of the heading reference and does not alter standard fixing techniques. Problems encountered in polar navigation Two factors peculiar to polar areas that make steering more difficult than usual are magnetic compass unreliability and geographic meridians converging at acute angles. The combined effect of these two factors makes steering by conventional methods difficult if not impossible. Each factor is examined below. Unreliability of magnetic compass Maintaining an accurate heading in high latitudes is difficult when a magnetic compass is used as the heading indicator. Built to align itself with the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field, the compass instead must react to the strong vertical component that predominates near the magnetic poles. Here, the horizontal component is too weak to provide a reliable indication of direction. As a result, compass performance becomes sluggish and inaccurate. The situation is further aggravated by the frequent magnetic storms in the polar regions that shift the magnetic lines of force. But even if these conditions did not exist, the mere proximity to the magnetic pole would sharply reduce compass usefulness. While the aircraft may fly a straight course, the compass indicator would swing rapidly, faithfully pointing at a magnetic pole passing off to the left or right. To cope with the unreliable magnetic compass, we use gyro information for our heading inputs. Problem of converging meridians The nature of the conventional geographic coordinate system is such that all meridians converge to the pole. Each meridian represents a degree of longitude, each is aligned with true north, tien, and true south. On polar charts, the navigator encounters one degree of change in true course for each meridian crossed, Thus, the more closely the aircraft approaches a pole, the more rapidly it crosses meridians. Even in straight and level flight along a great circle course, true course can change several degrees over a short period of time. You are placed in the peculiar position of constantly altering the aircraft's magnetic heading in order to maintain a straight course. For precision navigation, such a procedure is clearly out of the question. Notice in figure 14 1 that the course changes 60 degrees between A and B and much nearer the pole, between C and D it changes 120 degrees. The three polar projections most commonly used in polar areas for grid navigation are the transverse mercator, the polar stereographic, and the polar mnemonic. The transverse mercator and polar stereographic projections are used in flight, the polar mnemonic is used only for planning. The Lambert conformal projection is the one most commonly used for grid flight in subpolar areas. The division between polar and subpolar projections varies among the aeronautical chart series. For example, the division is at 70 degrees of latitude for the JN series, and at 80 degrees of latitude for the operational navigation chart, ONC, series charts. Grid overlay The graticule of the grid overlay eliminates the problem of converging meridians. Figure 14-2, it is a square grid and, though its meridians are aligned with grid north, GN, along the Greenwich meridian, they do not converge at GN. While the grid overlay can be superimposed on any projection, it is most commonly used with the polar stereographic, for flights in polar areas, and the Lambert conformal, for flights in subpolar areas. This is because a straight line on these projections approximates a great circle. As the great circle course crosses the true meridians, its true direction changes but its grid direction remains constant. Figures 14-3 and 14-4, all grid meridians are parallel to the Greenwich meridian and TN along the Greenwich meridian is the direction of GN over the entire chart. Relationship of grid north to true north Because grid meridians are parallel to the Greenwich meridian, the aircraft longitude and the convergence factor, CF, of the chart govern the angle between GN and TN. CF of 1.0 figure 14.5 shows that charts having CFs of 1.0 display GN to TN relationship as a direct function of longitude. In the northern hemisphere at 30 degrees west, GN is 30 degrees west of TN, at 60 degrees west, GN is 60 degrees west of TN. Similarly, at 130 degrees east longitude, GN is 130 degrees east of TN. In the southern hemisphere, the direction of GN with respect to TN is exactly opposite. CF of less than 1.0 figure 14.6 shows a chart with a CF of less than 1.0 with a grid overlay superimposed on it. The relationship between GN and TN on this chart is determined in the same manner as on charts with a CF of 1.0. On charts with a CF of less than 1.0, the value of the convergence angle at a given longitude is always smaller than the value of longitude and is equal to the CF times the aircraft longitude. Relationship of grid direction to true direction Use the following formulas to determine grid direction. In the northern hemisphere, 
grid direction equals true direction plus west longitude times CF grid direction equals true direction, east longitude times CF in the southern hemisphere, grid direction equals true direction, west longitude times CF grid direction equals true direction plus east longitude times CF polar angle is used to relate true direction to grid direction. Polar angle is measured clockwise through 360 degrees from GN to TN. It is simple to convert from one directional reference to the other by use of the formula, grid direction equals true direction plus polar angle to determine polar angle from convergence angle, CA, apply the following formulas, in the northwest and southeast quadrants, polar angle equals CA in the northeast and southwest quadrants, polar angle equals 360 degrees, CA. Chart transition since the relationship of the true meridians and the grid overlay on subpolar charts differs from that on polar charts because of different CFs, the overlays do not match when a transition is made from one chart to the other. Therefore, the grid course GC, a route on a subpolar chart is different than the GC of the same route on a polar chart. The chart transition problem is best solved during flight planning 1. Select a transition point common to both charts. 2. Measure the subpolar GC and the polar GC. 3. Compute the difference between the GCs obtained in step 2. This is the amount the compass pointer must be changed at the transition point. Note, if the GC on the first chart is smaller than the GC on the second chart, add the GC difference to the directional gyro, DG, reading and reposition the DG pointer. If the GC on the first chart is larger, subtract the GC difference. Example, chart transition from a subpolar to a polar chart. GC on subpolar chart is 316 degrees. GC on polar chart is 308 degrees. GC difference is 8 degrees. Gyro reading, grid heading GH, is 320 degrees. The transition is from a larger GC to a smaller GC, therefore, the GC difference, 8 degrees, is subtracted from the GH value read from the DG, 320 degrees. The DG pointer is then repositioned to the new GH, 312 degrees. Computed, applied, from, subpolar, GC 316 degrees old, subpolar, GH GC difference 2, polar, GC minus 8 degrees GC difference 308 degrees new, polar, GH 320 degrees minus 8 degrees 312 degrees caution. Do not alter the aircraft heading. Instead, simply reposition the DG pointer to the new GH. Crossing 180th meridian on subpolar chart When a flight crosses the 180th meridian on a subpolar grid chart, the GH changes because of the convergence of grid meridians along this true meridian. This is very similar to the chart transition procedure described above. When using a subpolar chart that crosses the 180th meridian on an easterly heading, figure 14.7a to b, the apical angle must be subtracted from the GH. Conversely, the apical angle must be added to the GH when on a westerly heading. Figure 14.7b to a, the apical angle can be measured on the chart at the 180th meridian between the converging GN references. The angle can also usually be found on the chart border, or computed by use of the following formula, apical angle equals 360 degrees. 360 degrees times CF, example, given, chart CF 0.785 find, apical angle apical angle equals 360 degrees. 360 degrees times 0.785, Apical angle equals 360 degrees, 283 degrees apical angle equals 77 degrees. Figure 14a. Gravation. Caution, do not alter the aircraft heading when crossing the L80th meridian, instead, simply reset the DG pointer to the new GH. Gravation The difference between the directions of the magnetic lines of force and GN is called gravation GV. GV is similar to variation and used to convert MH to GH and vice versa. Figure 14a shows the relationship between GN, TN, and MN. Lines of equal GV, isogrives, are plotted on grid charts. The formulas for computing GV in the northern hemisphere are, GV equals, W convergence angle, plus W variation GV equals, W convergence angle, E variation GV equals, plus E convergence angle, plus W variation GV equals, plus E convergence angle, E variation if GV is positive, it is W gravation, if gravation is negative, it is E gravation. For example, if variation is 17 degrees east and convergence angle is 76 degrees west, using the formula, GV equals, west convergence angle plus, E variation, GV equals, minus 76, plus, minus 17, equals minus 93 gigavolts equals 93 degrees east to compute MH from GH, use the formula, MH equals GH plus W gravation MH equals GH, E gravation in the southern hemisphere reverse the signs of west and east convergence angle in the formula above. 
gyro precession to eliminate the difficulties imposed by magnetic compass unreliability in polar areas, you disregard the magnetic compass in favor of a free-running gyro. Gyro steering is used because it is stable and independent of magnetic influence. When used as a steering instrument, the gyro is restricted so its spin axis always remains horizontal to the surface of the earth and is free to turn only in this horizontal plane. Any movement of a gyro spin axis from its initial horizontal alignment is called precession. The two types of precession are real and apparent, with apparent broken into earth rate transport and grid transport precession. Total precession is the cumulative effect of real and apparent precession. Real precession Real precession is the actual movement of a gyro spin axis from its initial alignment in space. Figure 14.9, it is caused by such imperfections as power fluctuation, imbalance of the gyro, friction in gyro gimbal bearings, and acceleration. Forces. As a result of the improved quality of equipment now being used, real precession is considered to be negligible. Some compass systems have a real precession rate of less than 1 degree per hour. Electrical or mechanical forces are intentionally applied by erection or compensation devices to align the gyro spin axis in relation to the Earth's surface. In this manner, the effects of apparent precession are eliminated and the gyro can then be used as a reliable reference. Apparent precession The spin axis of a gyro remains aligned with a fixed point in space, while your plane of reference changes, making it appear that the spin axis has moved. Apparent precession is this apparent movement of the gyro spin axis from its initial alignment. Earth rate precession Earth rate precession is caused by the rotation of the Earth while the spin axis of the gyro remains aligned with a fixed point in space. Earth rate precession is divided into two components. The tendency of the spin axis to tilt up or down from the horizontal plane of the observer is called the vertical component. The tendency of the spin axis to drift around laterally, that is, to change in azimuth, is called the horizontal component. Generally, when Earth rate is mentioned, it is the horizontal component that is referred to, since the vertical component is of little concern. A gyro located at the North Pole, with its spin axis initially aligned with the meridian, appears to turn 15.04 degrees per hour in the horizontal plane because the Earth turns 15.04 degrees per hour. Figure 1410, as shown in Figure 1410a, the apparent relationship between the Greenwich meridian and the gyro spin axis changes by 90 degrees in 6 hours, though the spin axis is still oriented to the same point in space. Thus, Apparent precession at the pole equals the rate of earth rotation. At the equator, as shown in figure 1410b, no earth rate precession occurs in the horizontal plane if the gyro spin axis is still aligned with the meridian and is parallel to the earth's spin axis. Vertical component when the gyro spin axis is turned perpendicular to the meridian, maximum earth rate precession occurs in the vertical component. Figure 1411, but the directional gyro does not precess vertically because of the internal restriction of the gyro movement in any but the horizontal plane. For practical purposes, earth rate precession is only that precession that occurs in the horizontal plane. Figure 1411 illustrates earth rate precession at the equator for 6 hours of time. Precession variation earth rate precession varies between 15.04 degrees slash hour at the poles and 0 degrees slash hour at the equator. It is computed for any latitude by multiplying 15.04 degrees times the sine of the latitude. For example, at 30 degrees north, the sine of latitude is 0.5. The horizontal component of earth rate is, therefore, 15 degrees slash hour right times 0.5 or 7.5 degrees slash hour right at 30 degrees north. Figure 1412, steering by gyro obviously, if the gyro is precessing relative to the steering datum of GN or TN, an aircraft steered by the gyro is let off heading at the same rate. To compensate for this precession, an artificial real precession is induced in the gyro to counteract the earth rate. At 30 degrees north latitude, earth rate precession is equal to 15 degrees times sin lot equals 15 times 0.5 or 7.5 degrees per hour to the right. Offsetting each rate effect hence, if at 30 degrees north latitude, a real precession of 7.5 degrees left per hour is induced in the gyro, it balances exactly and offsets earth rate effect. In ordinary gyros, a weight is used to produce this effect but, since the rate is fixed for a given latitude, the correction is good for only one latitude. The latitude chosen is normally the mean latitude of the area in which the aircraft operates. The N1 and AHRS compass systems have a latitude setting knob that you can use to adjust for the earth rate corrections. Earth transport precession, horizontal plane, Earth transport precession is a form of apparent precession that results from transporting a gyro from one point on the Earth's surface to another. The gyro spin axis appears to move because the aircraft, flying over the curved surface of the Earth, changes its attitude in relation to the gyro's fixed point in space. Figure 1413, 
Earth transport precession causes the gyro spin axis to move approximately 1 degree in the horizontal plane for each true meridian crossed. This effect is avoided by using GN as the steering reference. Grid transport precession Grid transport precession exists because meridian convergence is not precisely portrayed on charts. The navigator wants to maintain a straight line track, but the gyro follows a great circle track, which is a curved line on a chart. The rate at which the great circle track curves away from a straight line track is grid transport precession. This is proportional to the difference between convergence of the meridians as they appear on the earth and as they appear on the chart and the rate at which the aircraft crosses these meridians. Summary of precession Real precession is caused by friction in the gyro gimbal bearings and dynamic unbalance. It is an unpredictable quantity and can be measured only by means of heading checks. Earth rate precession is caused by the rotation of the earth. It can be computed in degrees per hour with the formula. 15.04 times sin lot. It is to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. All gyros are corrected to some degree for this precession, many by means of a latitude setting knob. Earth transport precession, horizontal plane, is an effect caused by using TN as a steering reference. It can be computed by using the formula, change longitude slash hour time sign mid latitude. The direction of the precession is a function of the TC of the aircraft. If the course is 0 degrees, 180 degrees, precession is to the right. If the course is 180 degrees, 360 degrees, precession is to the left. This precession effect is avoided by using GN as a steering reference. Grid transport precession is caused by the fact that the great circles are not portrayed as straight lines on plotting charts. The navigator tries to fly the straight pencil line course, the gyro a great circle course. The formula for grid transport precession is change longitude slash hour, sin lot, CF, where CF is the chart convergence factor. The direction of this precession is a function of the chart used the latitude and the TC. Direct substitution into the formula produces an answer valid for easterly courses, such as 0 degrees, 180 degrees. For westerly courses, the sign of the answer must be reversed. Gyro steering Gyro steering is much the same as magnetic steering, except that GH is used in place of true heading, TH. GH has the same relation to GC as TH has to true course, TC. The primary steering gyro in most aircraft provides directional data to the autopilot and maintains the aircraft on a preset heading. When the aircraft alters heading, it turns about the primary gyro while the gyro spin axis remains fixed in. Azimuth. If the primary gyro precesses, it causes the aircraft to change its heading by an amount equal to the precession. Starting a grid navigation leg grid navigation is normally entered while airborne on a constant heading. A constant heading is necessary because grid entry is accomplished by resetting the compass from a magnetic to a grid reference while on the same heading. After obtaining a grid celestial or inertial navigation system, INS, heading check, reset the compass immediately to the correct grid heading to avoid heading errors, because the pre-computed grid ZN is only good for shot time. Since the exact grid heading is set at the beginning of the navigation leg, precession is assumed to be zero until subsequent heading checks assess the accuracy of the gyro. The grid heading is normally obtained using a variant of the TH method or the INSTH. Using this method, set a grid ZN in the sexton azimuth counter before collimating on the body. Other heading shot methods can be used, but would delay resetting the gyro to accomplish math computations after the heading shot. Although any celestial body may be used, navigators commonly use the Sun or Polaris, depending on the time of day. Figure 1414, using a ZN graph in order to get an accurate grid ZN for daytime grid entry, the navigator must compute ZN of the sun for a time and geographic position where the grid navigation leg begins. If the geographic position for grid entry is known well in advance, you can prepare a ZN graph for a time window. A ZN graph makes grid entry easier, because it is usable for an extended period of time, therefore eliminating the need to pre-comp for a specific time. The graph can be constructed during flight planning, thus reducing workload in the air. To construct the graph, pre-comp and plot ZN on one axis and time on the other. Figure 1415, set up the time axis to cover the planned start time and several minutes earlier and later. Plot grid ZN on the other axis using normal pre-comp procedures and the start point coordinates. Because the time slash ZN slope is close to linear, pre-comping at 20 to 30 minute intervals and connecting the points gives acceptable accuracy. When the sun is near local noon, pre-comp ZN at closer intervals because the ZN changes rapidly. To use the graph when it is finished, enter on the time axis. Then extend a line perpendicular to the time axis until reaching the time slash ZN line. Finally, read the appropriate ZN on the ZN axis. 
Figure 1415 demonstrates using a graph to get a grid ZN for the time of 1700 Z. Although preparing a ZN graph takes a while, it pays dividends as long as you actually fly over the planned geographic point within the time frame covered by the graph. Applying precession to the doctor The most accurate method for applying precession to the doctor is the all behind slash half ahead method. This method corrects for the banana effect most commonly associated with precession. Since the full effect of precession does not occur at one time, we have to account for the gradual increase of precession. Step 1. Determine the hourly rate in figure 1416, grid entry occurred at 1700. At 1720, the navigator obtained a heading shot or MPP. The heading shot determined precession correction to be minus 2 and the compass was reset to the GH. On the MB4 computer, place the minus 2 correction on the outside scale in the time since grid entry, 20 minutes, on the inside scale. The hourly rate now appears above the index, 6.0R. To minimize error, the hourly rate has to be computed to the nearest tenth of a degree. Step 2. Compute all behind slash half ahead since precession begins at the last time the gyro was reset. For this example we need to start at grid entry 1700. At 1700, all behind would be determined to be 0 minutes and half ahead to the next dead reckoning, doctor, 1706, would be 3 minutes. To determine the amount of precession correction to be used, leave the hourly rate, 6.0, over the index and look above 3 minutes. The computed precession correction for the 1706 doctor is minus 0.3 degrees or 0 for use on the log. Next, we need to determine the precession correction for the 1720 doctor at 1706, all behind is 6 minutes and half ahead is 7 minutes. The total time used to compute the precession correction for this doctor is 13 minutes. Again, using the hourly rate, precession correction for the 1720 doctor is minus 1.3 degrees or minus 1 degree for the log. KC135 method since the all behind slash half ahead method tends to keep you behind, the KC135 method is used by some navigators. To predict precession. This method basically uses half of the computed precession correction for future DR slash MPPs when the precession correction is determined between two positions. Though not as accurate as the all behind slash half ahead method, the KC135 method can be effective if used with short doctors. Using the KC135 method, compensate for precession around the turn by getting a heading shot immediately before and after the turn, resetting the gyro after the heading shot restarts precession. False latitude A second method of compensating for precession while in flight involves the use of false latitude inputs into the gyro compass. Most gyro compasses have a latitude control that allows the navigator to compensate for earth rate precession, ERP. Normally, the latitude control is set to the actual latitude of the aircraft. However, other values may be set. For example, if the aircraft is at 30 degrees north and the latitude control knob is set to 70 degrees north, the gyro overcorrects for ERP. Since ERP is right in the northern hemisphere, the correction is to the left. Thus, setting a higher than actual latitude corrects for right precession over and above that for ERP. Since ERP 15 degrees slash hour time sign latitude, a table such as in figure 1417 can be developed to use this procedure. Chapter Summary The grid overlay and the freerunning gyro are used to overcome the difficulties of converging meridians and the unreliability of the magnetic compass when navigating in high latitudes. When using gyro steering, Maintain a record of the precession of both the primary and secondary gyros. The gyro log provides you with the information necessary to predict values when it is impossible to obtain heading checks because of overcast conditions or twilight. By maintaining a log on the secondary gyro, the navigator can change gyros in case of malfunction of the primary gyro. Use the information recorded in the gyro log in conjunction with the navigator's log to plot position and compute winds, headings, alter headings, and estimated time of arrivals, ETAs. And never forget grid is green.